What's up guys, it's JoePico14 here, and this is F122. This is not Minecraft, this is not City Skylines, this is something completely different. Welcome to my F122 My Team Career Mode series. Never done anything like this before, it's a totally different style than what we're kind of used to. And we're going to just make this a series, we're going to start to build some stories in the game we're gonna see how the player transfers or i guess i should say the driver transfers go how the teams get shifted around regulation changes all that fun stuff that goes into this series as well as the customization aspect of putting together our own livery our own uh, driver overalls and the upgrades and everything else that comes along with it so very excited to be giving this a try and uh i'm excited to have you guys along with this now of course, I have played this game before. I have played F122. I've played 2021, 2020, 2017, and the old Codemasters games back on the 360, like your 2010, 11, and 12 era. So I am pretty familiar with the way that these games work, especially the modern day ones, which is why I figured at this point I feel pretty comfortable, and I thought it would be kind of fun to bring that experience to YouTube and maybe kind of invigorate some life into my interest, maybe doing something that's a bit more up my alley these days. I, I play a lot more of this and I, I am involved a lot more in this stuff than, than with Minecraft these days. So I thought it might be worth giving this a shot. So uh, you're gonna be, we're gonna be in this episode just kind of getting things started. You're gonna get to see some of the process that goes into this. If you don't have the game, then you're gonna get to see it here. So. I'm very excited, and uh, with that, we're going to be jumping in here to the new save. So the two options we have, of course, are driver and starting a new team. I'm going to be going with starting a new team just because I think that's going to give us more options. I really was considering and even originally intending to go with the driver career because then we could switch around to different teams, and I figured maybe people would be more interested that way, but I'm going to just go with the my team just so we have more stuff to do. Uh, next, we have to choose our entry point. And I'm going to go with Newcomer here because, again, I think just starting from the back, it allows for the most progression. And for a longer-term series, at least in theory a longer-term series, that's really what you want. You want to have room to say, I'm starting at the back, let's, you know, let's advance to the front of the grid. So we're going to be going with Newcomer. Uh, for this first season here, at the very least, we're going to be going with a full 2022 calendar of 22 races. And then uh, here after this, I'm going to go into just a bunch of the settings. Here you can see my assists that I've got. I don't use too many. I do use ABS, traction control, uh, racing line. That's actually it, I believe. It's a good chance that I'll probably be changing these as we go on. I can think of the racing line. I can probably cut that down or, you know, eventually if I get familiar enough with these circuits, maybe just turn it off altogether. I have experimented a little bit with no traction control. It's interesting. So, and and the manual gearbox, I probably won't change that. Just again, I'm not familiar enough. Some of the other settings I end up going through here, I end up leaving most of this stuff to default, like the career settings. I don't give any boosts or uh, handicaps to anybody. Some of the mainstream YouTubers tend to go with the nerf the player, boost the AI model because they're just somewhat good at the game. Um, me, I am not nearly that good at this game. So given that, I'm going to just leave everything as it is. If I think things are too easy, then I've got a lot of other tools like upping the AI. Uh, I could, you know, I could get into some of that stuff, I guess. But I don't just have to do that. So not too worried about that right at the moment. For now, we're going to be doing 25% races. Might try doing 50% at some point. Maybe it's just a one-off thing, but we'll see how that goes. I have done 50% race before, I think just one, but I like it because it definitely it's it's longer and gives me more material to work with. So uh, expect to maybe see that. Oh, here we go. AI difficulty is going to be on 75. So again, not top of the tier, but I'm trying to get up there. And as I get better, I do try to push the number upwards so it's not too easy. But you know. I guess the main thing about this series, I am not a professional esports player, obviously. I'm just alright at the game, so basically, you know, again with the assists and things like flashbacks, we will be using flashbacks in this series, however they will be limited 
in each session so I won't be able to just keep doing it over and over I have to be more selective if I start to get down low I won't be able to just correct something that's you know minor but I'll have it if I crash out um, and something weird happens now I might get rid of it I do want to say that all of these settings or, or many of these settings I am flexible on as I go through this and as I get more comfortable with the game I want to just make that very clear because I do know that crashing out is sometimes just part of the game but at the same time I am just not good enough to play this game and this is my series so I guess if that's what I want to do I'm going to do it so um, that's pretty much all the settings you know there's other ones but not everything's worth mentioning one of the other things to note, I guess the last setting, is that we do have the Champions Edition, so we will be using the My Team icons within the game, which means we will be able to sign uh, well-known drivers such as Michael Schumacher, um, Mark Webber, I believe, is new in this game, Nico Hulkenberg, Felipe Massa, so kind of later into the series we'll be able to do those kinds of things, but no of the other teams, but none of the other teams will be able to sign them, just us. So next in the process, we actually dig into the creation itself of our character. Uh, this is just the closest avatar I can think of, um, of course, from America. And I actually had a bit of trouble coming up with a name that was appropriate to use because I didn't want to just throw in my real name. It was kind of, I was like thinking about, well, obviously my first name would be Joe, but beyond that, I'm actually not sure. So I ended up going with Cool. So my name in the game in this series is going to be Joe Cool, which... You know, it is what it is. It's fine. It's it's not perfect, but it works. And then my three-letter initials will just be JPC, which take that from my channel name. Next, you're given the opportunity to pick an uh, audio name. And for some reason, after all these years, Codemasters, the developers of this game, do not believe that anyone is actually named Joe. I find that ridiculous. I don't understand how they don't have that. Um, it's funny. I wish I could pick... Uh, Joe Guan Yu, like Joe, because when people say it, it tends to sound like they're just saying Joe, my name, but you can't do that. So I ended up just going with the rookie. <sighs> I don't know. I usually go with Joker, but I don't know. Again, I might change this if I decide to, but well, that's what we're going with for now. Driver number. Now that's another interesting one as well. So obviously in an ideal world, I would be picking number 14. However, our lovely friend Fernando Alonso has come back into the sport and stolen the number from me, so I have to get a bit more creative and decide. And in the end, I believe I chose number 32. Yes, in the end, I did go with 32. There's really no specific reason why. I mean, there is, but it's, I don't know. It was really random at the end of the day. It's mostly random. So. Uh, anyways, that's kind of our driver profile, so now we can start to actually move into the customization, and if you've been a fan of this channel after a while, or even if you've just noticed based on the channel art, we're big into the color orange around here. So naturally, this team is going to have an orange branding, at least for this first season. Trying not to make it look too much like McLaren, but it's a bit tricky considering McLaren is just, I don't know, they're just basically the same orange that I would pick, so it's a little bit tricky. So I had to go through the whole process of coming up with a helmet. I ended up just kind of keeping it with a dark tone and some orange. Uh, when it came to the driver overalls, I went with the Riviera option. Yeah, in the end, I actually ended up going with an orange and a black. Or I think it's like a very dark gray and then a lighter gray. Those are kind of our team colors, at least for the moment. And we went into the gloves some other things as well and uh, then that's basically our driver our team I should say so then next up we went into the uh, the actual team creation and our team for now anyways the team is going to be called Great Lakes Racing now why are we going to be called Great Lakes Racing well that is just based on roughly where I live Great Lakes are awesome pretty cool kind of tie in to saying you know yeah we're an american team we're from kind of the rust belt area um we're not like haas where they're kind of more in the south although debatable they're mostly based in the uk i think at this point but yeah i figured great lakes racing that'll do the trick for now um does it really have anything to do with the colors we chose not really but i don't know i i struggle to come up with 
names for teams in this game. So next up, we have selecting our sponsor, our primary sponsor for the team. It's about six options, I believe. Yes, there were six options, and some of the goals are reasonable. Some of the goals are not reasonable. I think finishing eighth or better in the constructors is a pretty big ask. Most of these actually weren't too, too bad. Certainly completing a full season would be a very safe option. But in the end, we decided to go with Echo because achieving two-point finishes across the season as a team is a pretty reasonable goal. I've done it on other career saves, so I don't see why we couldn't do that now. So another big question, I think this one is probably one of the most fun to answer, is which power unit supplier do we go with? Um, personally, I am a big Red Bull fan. I will be honest with you, I do not like Mercedes. However, I will give them the absolute respect for the power unit they've made and it still is now it's extremely durable and thankfully they've got it at 100 because i would say it's pretty darn reliable it's been reliable for years and uh, it's, it gives pretty good performance too however i am going to use my bias and for now we're going with red bull powertrains i'm willing to take the hit so we're just going to go with it i'm actually i'm not too worried about durability because I've actually disabled some of the durability. Again, I'm sorry if you don't like it. Might change it in the future, but just for now, I don't need to be worrying about that. All right, teammate selection. So this is kind of a fun one. There's You get some options. Uh, a lot of people, I feel like, kind of go with Oscar Piastri because that guy probably should have an F1 seat in, a, in you know replacing somebody like Latifi or Stroll or, or even Daniel Ricciardo. Um, but in the end, I'm going to go with Jack Aitken because he's British. Maybe some of that British bias will come in handy. I think he's just a pretty solid overall. His focus is really good, and uh, he doesn't cost too much to sign for our contract. So Jack Aitken is going to be our teammate for the time being. So now we're going to get into the livery, which we'll save that for the reveal. And then, of course, we had to come up with a emblem or an emblem. And I'm going to be going with this design here. This, uh, it's actually a buck. Now, you might be asking again, what does this have to do with Great Lakes? Um, there's a lot of deer in the Great Lakes area. There's no doubt about it. And I think that it's kind of a core area. And I think the emblem itself looks pretty cool as well. It's kind of unique as opposed to a lot of these other ones, which are very abstract. And the hexagon kind of works, kind of works with the design. It feels like it's made for it. So, and we can get to use our, our color scheme as well, which I really like. So very pleased with that. And with that, we are going to head over to HQ for a little discussion with our friend, Will Buxton. and welcome to this, a very special edition of Paddock Pass. We're here at the headquarters of Formula One's newest team for an exclusive first look at what they will be bringing to the sport. It's always an exciting moment to welcome a new team onto the grid. However, what makes this occasion a little more special is how strikingly different the cars are this year. Yep, the long-awaited new regulations are finally here, and with them, the start of the next era of Formula One. The 2022 season ushers in a change of direction to the regulations aimed at promoting closer racing. With new aero additions in the form of swooping front and rear wings, along with the new eye-catching 18-inch low-profile tires that will push tire technology to the limit. So then, the question remains as to whether this team can grasp the opportunity before them with both hands, and lead the charge against the rest of the paddock. We'll find out soon enough, as the new season is just about to begin. But first, let's see the unveiling of the team's car and meet the owner of the brand new Formula One team. So there's the car in all its glory, as you can kind of see in the background there. Yes, it's orange, very orange. Shouldn't really expect anything different from me. 
uh, at this point if you're familiar with my channel. Um, here's kind of the interview section that we do with Will Buxton, which I'll just kind of show you which selection we chose for each thing because it is kind of a long segment and I don't want to take up too much of your time uh, sitting through that. But basically what you do in that section is you answer the questions and kind of giving credit to different departments. And those different departments that you praise affect how your car is at the beginning of the series. So I ended up going with mostly an aero focus and a powertrain focus. I feel like aero is just really important for being able to drive the car. Drivability is something I really want to have. Um, and then after that, it's just about me being able to, I don't know, drive the car properly. So I figure that's an important thing to do. So next, now we finally make it into the actual kind of the, I guess the interface for for what's going on here. We start to read through some email about just things getting going. We got to fill out some activities here, which I'm going to end up going with the uh, preseason merchandise and the driver training that'll bring in some cash for the team. And the driver training camp will help our second driver, Aitken, kind of help him on his way to uh, joining the Formula One grid. So... As you can see here, our aerodynamics facility is going to be spec 1, which basically means that we can do more upgrades, uh, there's less chance for failure, and I believe it takes less time to produce those upgrades, and it generates us more uh, resource points. But interestingly enough, when I actually clicked on to the, uh, the actual image here, we actually got a lot of upgrades for the powertrain and for durability of all things, which is really interesting because I gave no credit to durability at all in my interview, I believe. So why we got so much credit there, I'm not sure. Powertrain kind of makes sense. I did give them some credit. Um, it's actually kind of good, though, because with aero being as low as it is, or only having those two upgrades, and we have a good facility, that actually allows us to make some good progress there, uh, hopefully early on this season. So it's interesting. And uh, here's our car performance chart, which puts us down at 8th out of 11 teams on the grid, which I think is not too bad. I think that gives us some room to grow. We're kind of the lead of these, uh, the back markers at the moment. We're just tailing off of the midfield. The midfield actually really doesn't exist here. It's like, it's very spread out. You have Ferrari and Red Bull way up at the top. And then Mercedes is just kind of out in nowhere, which is actually pretty realistic considering where we're at in the season right now. Mercedes feels like a third place team, but they don't really have anyone to compete against. Uh, Alfa Romeo and Alpine are kind of close. Haas is out in no man's land, and then comes the back markers. So, a very spread out grid at the moment. But as the season goes on, I know that that's going to start to converge. So we start to go through some of the upgrades here. Um, we just kind of go with some minor ones that we can afford. Uh, one upgrade on the chassis, which is good since we don't have anything on the chassis at the moment. Uh, and then we end up actually going with a durability upgrade to the gearbox, which I figured is important because uh, components are going to be really hard to come by this season in the game, just considering how restricted they are. For example, um, I believe it's the ICE is, uh, you can only have three per season, and gearboxes, I believe, could be the same. So to kind of get out in front of that durability-wise is not a bad thing, but as long as we don't focus on it. Oh, here, actually, we, we can see... Yeah, we have three ICEs, three of most of these components. I actually have four gearboxes, but still, that's not a lot for 22 races. So, I do think investing in durability at least a little bit, at least a little bit is important. So, we start to advance our time. We get through here and uh, we decide we should spend some money. We end up giving ourselves a personal development feedback boost, which allows us to get more resource points. There you can see at Jack Aitken there again. We'll have him under contract for the first half of the season, approximately. And uh, that, then we finally uh, we start to do some more stuff with resource points, and then it's off to Bahrain, the first race of the season. Just the person I wanted to see. I'm Andrea. I'm head of the R&D for the team. You get used to hearing a lot from me. The workstation is set up and ready for you. So get settled in, because we have a lot of work to do. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And welcome to the team. So here's our HQ. Things are looking pretty nice. Uh, we're actually just going to jump pretty much straight in here to uh, first practice.
Hey mate, this is Mark. Just wanted to say thanks for trusting me as your race engineer. I won't let you down. The car's ready to go, but it's brand new of course, so there may be a few issues here and there. We'll be keeping a close eye on all the data from here. Yeah, things are looking really good actually. So, we have our practice programs which are, I've, well not heard, I guess I've seen for myself, they're pretty strict, like the expectations on them are pretty high, so we'll see if balancing gets patched into the game anytime soon. There's quite a few issues with the game right now, some very glaring ones. Uh, for example, our sector times, what you'll see once we jump in here, they won't be available, you won't be able to see how our lap times really compare. Well, you'll be able to see the lap times, it's the three sectors you won't be able to see compared, lap over lap. Anyway, we head out for our first lap here on the hard tire at Bahrain, and I won't lie, I had to do this a couple times because I kept missing the apex. I don't know why. I think it was just because I was on the hard tires, and I mostly do a lot of soft tire running in this game because if I do a five lap race or a one shot qualifying, then you're just going to be dealing with the soft tire. So starting on the hard tire is a little bit different. kind of got to get used to it. The fact that it just doesn't warm up. That's a real life thing as well. Which is really interesting. But eventually we do get it. And uh, we actually start to make our way around the circuit. Don't really have too many issues. And then we eventually actually go on our first hot lap here. ends up being a 136.3, which I'm going to be honest, I don't know how good that is. I went purple, means nothing. <laughs> I was the first person to set a lap. In the second lap here, we're kind of fighting a little bit with the Red Bull of Sergio Perez for some reason. Not sure what Checo was doing, but he was just, just kind of messing with us a little bit. I'm not too sure, but eventually we do let him go past. And uh, we do put in another time. Bahrain is not a track that I've ever really struggled with. I think it's a pretty good track overall for racing. I think it's got a good mix of corners and, and passing opportunities, which is really important. Um, we do end up with a bit of underbody damage, probably from running over some curbs. I, I won't lie, I'm a little bit sloppy with that. Uh, I should also mention I am playing on a controller. I don't have a steering wheel. I don't have pedals. I wish I did, but I don't have the money to just go out and spend those at the moment. I'm fine with the controller. I've gotten pretty used to it. And this game is a lot easier to play on controller than 2021. 2021 was challenging on a controller. It was just challenging in general with how easy the car would step out from you. So, so here we are going in for another lap. do end up improving on our time by about eight tenths and that puts us p7 on the soft tire so not a great lap considering i went from the hard to the soft but definitely still some improvement and uh that's about all we do we do take a look at jack aitken how he's doing he's down there in 16th so i guess that's fairly representative he is on the hard tire as well so that's you know through on the softs and maybe he'd be a bit higher up in the ranking so let's review our top three. Leclerc, Perez, and George Russell. Sadly, it's time to say goodbye as free practice is over. However, we'll be back shortly for more Formula One action. So Leclerc, Perez, and Russell in the top three. So that's very interesting there. Uh, Valtteri Bottas in the Alfa Romeo is also up there on the hard tire. That's, that's interesting. I mean, Alfa Romeo, I suppose, in this... I actually think they're the fourth best team, so I suppose I shouldn't be too surprised they're up there. Maybe I should be more surprised by Kevin Magnussen putting his Haas with a P7 time. That's very good, actually. And there we end up down in uh, 19th and 20th with the uh, Aston Martin and Williams behind us. So not a fantastic result, but considering it's just first practice, I think it's all right. That's going to bring us to the end of this first episode of Career Mode. Looking forward to bringing you guys more in the next episode. We will tackle the rest of the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend, 
um, some stuff. We'll run the practice programs for FP2 and FP3, and then we'll jump into qualifying. We'll be doing the three round qualifying, and then we'll be doing our 25% race. So I'm looking forward to giving that all a try, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this career mode turns out. Hopefully you'll stick around for it.